Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Dana Villa from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. In the U.S. state of Utah, Senator Mike Lee has urged the 12 Republican senators who cast their vote in support of the Respect for Marriage Act, or the RFMA, to put in place protective measures for citizens who believe marriage is between a man and a woman. He told them to oppose the closure of the debate on the Respect for Marriage Act unless the Lee Amendment is added to the legislation. RFMA seeks the recognition of same-sex marriage and demands protection for interracial marriages. Lee said that the free exercise of religion is necessary for the health of the country and everyone must have the courage to protect it. If the act is passed with the Lee Amendment, then it would prevent the federal authorities from taking action against an individual who believes that marriage is the union between a man and a woman based on his religious or moral convictions. Last Wednesday, the Senate voted 60-37 to go ahead with the RFMA. Four American pro-life Advocates were sentenced to 45 days in a county jail for felony. This is in connection with a 2019 Red Rose Rescue action at a Michigan abortion clinic. Lauren Handy, William Goodman, Patrice Woodworth, and Matthew Connolly were defending the right to life of the unborn at the Women's Center of Flint and Saginaw in Michigan in 2019. However, they were charged with trespassing, distributing the peace, and resisting arrest. All four were detained immediately and will be housed in the Genesee County Jail in Flint. On Friday, November 18, PAUU-affiliated activists gathered outside the jail calling for the release of the detained. According to a progressive anti-abortion uprising, or PAUU, statement, the organization's director was also jailed. The Red Rose Rescue is a direct action in which activists go into abortion clinics, distribute red roses and books that support life, and give the patients hope and money. In an apparent gesture of sympathy for the demonstrators back home, the Iranian soccer squad opted not to sing the national anthem as it was played ahead of their match with England on Monday, November 21. As the anthem was played at the Khalifa International Stadium, the players were conspicuous by their silence. Protests are rolling in Iran following the custodial death of 22-year-old Masa Amini, who was arrested for improperly wearing the hijab. In the protests marked by the public burning of headscarves and the cutting of hair, the government has brutally cracked down on protesters and hundreds have been killed so far. Meanwhile, Iran has arrested two prominent actors who expressed solidarity with the protests and removed their headscarves in public. 52-year-old Hengame Ghaziani and 60-year-old Katayun Riai were arrested and summoned by prosecutors for provocative social media posts, according to their state media. On Monday, November 21, Pope Francis named the Apostolic Nuncio to the United Kingdom, Archbishop Claudio Guggerotti, as the new prefect of the Vatican Dicastery for Oriental Churches. The 67-year-old Italian Archbishop succeeds Argentine Cardinal Leonardo Sandri, who has led the Dicastery since 2007. Cardinal Sandri stepped down after he turned 79 on November 18. Although the customary retirement age for bishops is 75, a few Vatican prefects have been allowed to continue. Archbishop Guggerotti has been serving as the nuncio to Britain since 2020. He is expected to assume charge of the dicastery in mid-January next year. Born in Verona in 1955, Archbishop Guggerotti joined the Pious Society of Don Nicola Mazza and was ordained a priest in 1982. He has also served as nuncio to Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, and Ukraine. Archbishop Guggerotti has also authored several books on Oriental churches and the liturgy. 
At least 160 people have been killed in Indonesia's West Java province on Monday, November 21, after a quake measuring 5.6 on the Richter scale rocked the region. The epicenter of the tremors was close to the town of Sianjur, which is 45 miles southeast of the capital, Jakarta. Governor Ridwan Kamil of West Java posted on Instagram that 162 people had died and 326 had been hurt. The search for people who are trapped under the rubble is going on and the death toll could be higher, said authorities. It is estimated that over 2,200 houses have been destroyed and damaged and more than 5,300 individuals had to be relocated. Authorities reported that communications were being hampered by a lack of electricity and that landslides in some regions were preventing evacuations. Indonesia is situated on the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire. This part of the Earth's crust is the meeting point of several plates causing frequent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The Bishops' Conference of England and Wales is set to appeal to the Holy See to upgrade the Memorial of Our Lady of Walsingham to become a feast in England. In a resolution from the Bishops' Autumn Plenary held at Hinsley Hall in Leeds, the Bishops' Conference asked the Department for Christian Life and Worship to prepare the necessary texts and other materials to petition the Dicastery for Divine Worship and Discipline of the Sacraments. The Bishops' Conference wanted the Dicastery to recognize the Memorial of Our Lady of Walsingham on September 24 as a feast in England. This move has been hailed by the rector of the Basilica and the National Shrine of Our Lady in Walsingham, Monsignor Philip Moger. The latest season of the popular Bible-based television series, The Chosen, debuted in top three over the weekend. This has stunned Hollywood insiders. The first and second episodes of The Chosen Season 3 hit theaters on November 18. It came third with an estimated $8.2 million in revenue, just behind The Menu and Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Following the success of the show during a Facebook live stream, director Dallas Jenkins said the success will allow The Chosen to be back in theaters in the future. The film was screened in nearly 2,000 theaters and received a rousing welcome from moviegoers across the country. Members of the National Peace Committee, or NPC in Nigeria, which includes representatives of the Catholic bishops, have raised concern over violent election campaigns ahead of the country's general elections for February 2023. In a press release, NPC members Matthew Hassan Kuka of Sokoto and Cardinal John Onayakan said Nigerians are genuinely concerned, troubled and disappointed by how some political actors have been conducting themselves in the last few weeks. In a statement, they had said that Nigerians have been fed with a menu of intemperate language, intimidation, and outright violence in the field of campaigns. The statement was signed by the committee's convener and chairman, Bishop Kuka and General Abdul Salami Abubakar, respectively. The Information Commissioner and residents said that over 100 people, including women and children, were abducted from Zamfara State in northeastern Nigeria by gunmen. The abductions took place in four villages in the state. Kidnappers attacked Kanwa village in Zurmi and abducted more than 40 people. 37 mostly women and children were taken from the Wabre community. The abducted children are between the age group of 14 to 16. In the Yankaba and Gidangoga communities of the Maradun local government area, at least 38 people were kidnapped while working on their farms. In another news development, the Church of Bolivia has asked the state authorities to listen to the cry of a suffering and tired people and provide a quick and constitutional solution to the census-related conflict. Amid the conflict caused by the possible postponement of the date of the population census and the consequent strike that has been taking place for a month in Santa Cruz, the Church celebrated the Feast of Christ the King. 
Archbishop Emeritus Sergio Gualberti of Santa Cruz presided over the Holy Eucharist on Sunday, November 20, in the local cathedral and asked the authorities and state institutions to listen to the cry of the people. The prelate affirmed that the people also ask for respect for life and peaceful coexistence and not threats. Shock groups and confrontations were their aftermath of the pain, wounded, and dead. An abducted Nigerian priest has been freed 24 hours after his kidnapping. It was Father Cyril Okafur who was released by the Umeri Community Vigilante Team. He was taken by armed men on November 15 from the Holy Ghost Adoration Center in Igbokwu in southwestern Anambra State. The Home Affairs Ministry stated that along with the priest, another person was also released. According to the Omeri General Chairman Johnny Chukwudi Mechi, the vigilante group was instrumental in securing the release of the priest. In the statement, he added that the abductors moved the priest to Inogu and then to Teji before finally being abandoned in Omeri. Amid the conflict in Myanmar, the Catholic Church has been blessed with 10 new priests and one deacon. This is a sign of hope for the conflict-affected Christian community in the Southeast Asian country. Bishop Peter La of Pekon Diocese presided over the priestly and diaconate ordination ceremony at Christ the King Cathedral in Luikau on November 20. Out of the 11, nine are from Luikau, and the remaining priests and deacon are from members of the Missionaries of Faith community. Hundreds of priests and religious took part in the ceremony in the capital, Kaya State, which has faced several attacks over the military coup in February of 2021. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.